Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News.、Uh, our education system is in a shamble,、mm-hmm. and、uh, especially in California, Northern California, Southern California, doesn't matter where it is.、Uh, our education is in big trouble. And today we have a special guest. He is in the school board right now, and he is fighting this battle alone. He is fighting as a conservative school board member in a very leftist place. <laughs> <laughs>、um, without further ado,、uh, can you introduce yourself a little bit and、uh, please let us know what kind of problem you see inside our school system? All right. Thank you for having me. My name is Mark Cooper. And before I get started, I must put out that disclaimer statement that I'm not representing Franklin McKinley School District. I'm not representing my comments、uh, or my opinions, and they're for me personally. And I'm not ready representing Franklin McKinley School Board. So I just want to put that out there. For, although the facts that I'm going to share are all public knowledge, and I have a copy of all that, I can res- provide anybody.、In. A PowerPoint presentation that I've that I've gathered so much information data that's out there. So I'm not sharing with you anything that's not publicly known. But my name is Mark Cooper. I'm in my second year at Franklin McKinley School on school board. I was elected in 2022. I have two more years left,、um, and I'm also 21st year. This is my 21st year that I've been teaching in the public school system. A、uh, 16 here in San Jose. I started up in Oakland, came down further and further south, down down to San Jose. Was the last 16 years, public high school teacher, and、um, the last what caused me to run、uh, two years ago for school board was in the school district where I'm at, which is San Jose Unified, which is one of the largest in in California.、Um, I noticed it as a All my ninth graders, incoming ninth graders, the academic proficiency level was getting lower and lower and lower every year. Where I have incoming ninth graders who could who could barely write a sentence. Of no lie, they couldn't even write a sentence. Many of them, I had doing basic math skills. They didn't know their multiplication tables. They couldn't do very basic math skills. So, and it was interesting because right before I ran,、uh, decided to run. Uh, assistant principal came in my office in my classroom. Excuse me. At the end of the day, he said, "Hey, Mark, can, can I ask you something personal? I mean, I just personal question." I said, "Sure." He said, "Have you been noticing the like the last two, three, four years that the academic level has been going down, down, down every year of our incoming ninth graders?" And it was really interesting because I just. Got through. I was just finished speaking to my instructional associate about the same thing, the same dilemma. So, it's a known fact that our academic、uh, proficiency level, especially in English language arts and writing, I mean, excuse me, and mathematics, are going down, down, down in California. So that was when I decided. You know, I kn- I've known about this problem for years and years and years. And as a parent, and as a, a,、um, a veteran of the、uh, United States Air Force. I said, "Hey, we have to have more than just cheerleaders on the sidelines." And there's a problem. There's a problem. Yes, there's a problem. We need somebody. We need somebodies to step in and do something. Well, I've never been. I'm not a politician. I'm just like say a concerned citizen, a parent, and a teacher who I'm actually in there, and I know what's going on. I see what's going on. I see what's happening. I see that when. Uh, although I've taught science for the last ten years at Willow Glen High School in San Jose, and I've been teaching sexual reproduction, I've been teaching the biology, I've been teaching all of the stuff that the kids need to know about having babies and about what they can do. But then I noticed that the district, it's not just our district, other districts such as Franklin McKinley School District, start hiring outside contractors like in our district, Planned Parenthood. To come in and teach the kids about sex ed, it's like、uh, I've been doing that as a science teacher all these years. Why? And then I noticed as they fold, folded out their curriculum and said, "This is what we're going to teach in your class." Is that all right? And the administration tells us two weeks. Let them do whatever they want. You just stand by and 
offer support as they need it. They're going to teach you your science, your health class for the next two weeks. And I, I looked at the material and I, I'm thinking, this is crazy. This is crazy because 70 to 80% of it is not about uh, men and women, men, boys and girls, uh, uh, sexual reproduction and their bodies, but it was about gender identity. And it was about changing your gender and what do you call those? Other, and I'm going, this is not sex education. This is, this is an agenda behind all of this. So again, that's those kind of things caused me to say, enough, I've got to do something. So I ran for school board. There were three openings. I came in second place out of all, all the, the people that, that voted. And it's interesting because in, in our Franklin McKinney School District, which I just moved there like four years ago, um, it's a TK through eighth grade. I wanted to run for Fran and San Jose Unified, but they said, no, you can't because you're still working there. I said, okay, conflict of interest, I get that. But since I live in Franklin McKinley School District and it's a TK through eight, that was almost like a, a godsend because I know the kind of kids that, that come into high school. They are not equipped. They're not, uh, they're not ready to be put into an algebra in one class. In fact, I talked to many of the general ed teachers, and they said that over 50 to 60 to 70 percent of the, the eighth graders that get put into ninth grade algebra one class fail their first year, fail because they're not ready academically. So as a running for Franklin McKinley School District, as on the school board, the most conservative, and I put it out there, parents should talk about gender. They should talk about ethics. They should talk about morality. They should talk about their values at home to their kids themselves. That's not something we should be doing in school. We need to be teaching reading, writing, arithmetic, the sciences, the arts. We should be focusing on academics. So I ran and I was elected. And now I'm, I'm the biggest burden to the, to the other four school members, school board members. But you know what? I'm standing up for three main things. Parents' rights, transparency, and the academic proficiency. That's where we're at right now. And uh, the more I got into Franklin McKinley School District, and, and uh, just a little something about our district, about 58, almost 60% of our school district is Hispanic. Hmm. Uh, about 38% of our school district is Vietnamese. So that's the demographics of our school district. Why do you think uh, sex education got into the, the school? You, you've been a teacher for the longest time. When I first came to America, uh, that's in uh, 1998, mm -hmm. and that's when I first started, like, uh, oh, there is sex ed in America. Like when I was in Taiwan, there was no sex such thing as sex ed because n nothing need to be taught about sex in school. Like personally, from my opinion, dog never had sex ed. Monkeys never had sex ed. Like people before us never had sex ed. But now, why are they pushing sex education into our students' brain? What, what are they trying to do? And you've been an educator all your life. You must saw the difference. Like, when did it start, and why is it becoming something like this right now? I don't know. I can't say exactly when it started, but it seems like in the last ten years, especially in the last five years, it's been getting more and more and more more uh, uh, focusing not on um, a sperm cell and an egg cell and come together and that life begins at conception not about that not about menstruation not about all the no it's not about that it's about a different i hate to use the word agenda because people hear that word they hear all oh, your political and you're you're promoting this agenda out there that's out there and and um but it's real and i don't know if, if you want to call it an agenda but it's more and more about gender identity we're smart enough to know that children they're, that are in their first grade or kindergarten, third grade, fourth grade, they are not, most of them are not thinking about 
am I really a boy or am I really a girl? <laughs> I mean, That's true. Yeah. They're, they're really, they're not thinking of, of those things. Mm -hmm. Where do they get that information from? And I, I, I would be willing to say that the majority of the parents aren't teaching their kids those things. A mm -hmm. lot of those things has come from the media, which they're watching all the time, even on the Disney and the uh, Nickelodeon, all this, they're starting to push that kind of stuff. Uh, transgender, they're, they're talking about and it's confusing our children. They let children be children. Let them enjoy life. Not, not confuse them about, are you really, a, you act more like a boy. Have you ever thought about being a boy to your little daughter? More uh, shocked my attention or made me think about more was when as administrators tell us teachers, they've been telling us teachers, hey, you can talk to your students, talk to your children about these things, gender, about these things, and tell your 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 children they don't have to, and they they don't feel comfortable. They don't need to talk to their parents. Don't have them talk to parents. Talk to us, and we'll help them. And that's where we're getting this. In the last several years, we're getting this, and now with AB nineteen fifty five, but they're pushing to say that hey, we can talk to your ki your children about letting them change their names. What kindergartner, what first grader, what second grader, what child is thinking about changing their name to a boy's name or to a girl's name? That is all being included in the sex ed. It, it's not like said, it's not just about the sperm cell and the, and the uh, egg cell. It's not ta talking about the fallopian tubes. It's not talking, that is science. That's biology. That's what we teach in our science classes. But when we start talking about other things and bring other things in about like gender identity what do you feel like and how can we help you without your parents knowing about it and that's now going to be legal or law that's a major problem enough we need to st stand up we need to do something what about the teachers uh, other teachers are the teachers supported mm -hmm. supportive of someone like you to go to the school board or the teachers are most likely stand with the government and the teachers union, like, Hey, we should trans the kid. We should do that. What, what do the majority of the teacher you see? Because you have a cross on your lapel. I, I, I suppose if you wear that around San Jose area is not a very popular theme over there. <laughs> well, actually I wear this at school because it's legal. Now we found we, the Supreme court ruled that, several years ago that you can wear a, 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 an item like your cross and not get in trouble for that. So I wear that all my kids, all my faculty, all the faculty, and our, we have a large campus of like, I think 1700 kids. So we have large, but they all know that I'm a Christian. They all know. And I wear this when, when I were on the school board and many of the parents I'd come in contact with Frank McKinley activity, uh, they're glad to be able to speak to me. As far as teachers go, you know, it, it, I know as, as a, a teacher myself, we, we are um, put under so much pressure to join the teachers union. You mm -hmm. must. And if you don't, you're one or, or, or two or three people, teachers out of the whole 185 teachers on our campus who are not, te I mean, excuse me, 88 teachers who are not in the, part of the union, you're a bad person. You're a really almost like you're ostrac ostracized and you're kicked out because there's so much power in the teachers unions to get these board members on board who are pushing these agenda items. The, these uh, sex programs that talk more about gender and then about in, who contract other contractors in to come and teach our kids about gender identity and the, uh, the different, the different uh, ways to treat other people who feel differently than you. Now I want to, I want to put it out right, right away that I'm not against as a, as an adult, adult, they can choose if they want to sleep with another man or sleep with another woman. That's their choice. I don't, you can ask me personally how I feel about it. I don't agree with it. And I'll take you to the Bible and I'll show you what the Bible says, but that's your right as an adult. But when you put, start putting that onto children and to children whose parents don't even know about it, that's a problem. That's a problem. So that's where the where I get many times I get accused of being, oh, you're an, you're anti uh, LGBT, you're anti this, you're anti this, you're you you're you're, a, a, you're for book ban. You want to ban books? Mm -hmm. It's like no, no. It's about giving the rights to the parents. 
there's rated movies, PG, P R, G. There's rated video games for kids. They can't watch this because they're too young. But we don't have anything, anything's on our school libraries or on our public libraries for kids. They can do whatever they want without parental consent. So that's, again, we got to take this back to the parents. So I don't know if I answered the question about sex, but it's, been, it's not just that. It's about everything. Take it away. More about taking parents' rights away and let, letting the teachers' unions, which are very, very powerful because they have money. They have money. And they're in bed with the politicians, especially in the Democrat part. I don't, maybe many of the Republicans, too. I don't know. It's a battle. It's a struggle. That's why we get more pushback, not from parents and not even always from teachers, but the teacher union and the uh, the Board of Education or the California Board of Education. We get more pushback from the government, from the higher ups than we get from the locals. Many times I talked to parents and they said, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that my kids are being shown those things in school. I didn't know that they're teaching those things to my kids. I didn't know that in Franklin McKinley School District, 70, almost 75% of our kids are not at grade level in math. And that's the worst it's ever been. It's gone down 10 years, the last 10 years to almost 75% of the kids are not at grade level in math. 65% are not at grade level in writing and reading. That's yeah. pathetic. And many yeah. of the parents say, I didn't know that. Other than their academic, I believe this kind of education system, this kind of uh, brainwashing, indoctrination, the kids must have a different attitude towards school and towards teachers and towards authority, towards learning. They want to fight back and they want to be you know, they're basically saying that, hey, you can do whatever you want, and uh, it, it, we, 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 we're going to teach you to uh, be different, be yourself. Don't learn anything. These are uh, the old way. You don't need to learn that. It, it, do, you, do you see that in your classroom when while you were a teacher? Like, do, are, are the kids more rebellious at, and learning attitude is different from, like, let's say, 20 years ago? Well, I'm still teaching. The lady says this is my 21st year teaching. I'm just off for summer right now. I taught summer school last month. But yes, the the um, the mentality, the uh, the attitude uh, is completely different. And from this year to the way it was five years ago to the way it was 10 years ago, a lot more respect, a lot more respect for authority, a lot more um, interaction with parents, a lot more... Um, control in the classrooms and just the kids wanted to learn. The children wanted to excel and be the best. Now, unfortunately, it's a, it's a mindset of uh, you owe me this. You owe me entitlement. And many people entitlement. said enti entitlement. And uh, unfortunately, we see this in San Jose. We see this in Oakland. We see this in places where kids just go, kids, teenagers, young people, just go into stores and just ransack take whatever because they believe it's theirs and they're owed that and so you you're taking away the even the work ethic of hey i've got to really work hard to get good grades or or to get a raise on my job or to do well in life and to have my own uh, uh ability to have an apartment or to have a car or to own my own house someday we've taken away those uh, we've taken away those um in, initiatives now they're less motivated just to get them to come to school. And, and in our districts, we're seeing this now, not as much in Franklin McKinley because K, TK through eighth grade, because they don't get the grades as much. Seventh and eighth grade, maybe if they start getting letter grades, maybe sixth grade. But high school, now we're just told pass everybody, pretty much pass everybody. That's why you see very, very high uh, graduation rates, 98% in your district or in your school, 98. But if you really get down and say, well, can you read, can you write me a paragraph why you want this job? They can't do it. Well, now we're being just taught, just go ahead and don't teach the multiplication tables. And this comes down from the CTA, California Teacher Association and the state government. Don't teach that anymore. Just teach them, let them use their calculators, which is fine. But if they put in the wrong number, how will they know that two times three, and it says, my calculator says it's eight. Mr. Cooper, two times three is eight. See, 
I said, no, two times three is six. Don't you know that? But no, no, you said I could use my calculator. See, we were taking the system down further and further, lower and lower and lower academically, but it also gives the, the, the kids a false sense of security uh, uh, that they can do anything. And then when they get their real, when it gets to the real life, and I transition a lot of my kids to go into post secondary to get go get jobs, are they equipped uh, mentally, psychologically, uh, physically, uh, academically to go get the Google jobs or to go get the the uh, Tesla jobs or or you name the jobs that require a lot more academics, a lot more math skills or science skills or reading skills. Just reading skills are basic. But when we get our kids reading at fourth, fifth, and sixth grade level at best, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So it's a huge problem. And again, that's why I ran. And that's why these guys are running, Josh and, and um, Josue. And hopefully we get uh, the school board, we get the majority, and maybe we can turn some things around, get our focus back to the academics, and let the parents talk about the personal issues at home. It's a big challenge. I'm trying to do something. I appreciate you guys just getting it out there, getting the word out to people that, hey, parents, parents do care. And there are many teachers that do care, but unfortunately, they've been bullied, bullied to be teacher. You have to be part of the union. You have to be part of the system because if you break away from that, you're going to be the, the bad guy. You're going to be the ostracized. You're going to have a hard life as a teacher. Yeah, uh, I think it's really sad to mm. see it, especially in San Jose. San Jose was the educational center of California. The whole UC system started in San Jose. And then uh, like, like, like the UC Irvine, UC uh, LA, UC San Diego, all the UC systems started in uh, UC San Jose. And then uh, right now, our education system is really falling apart and is controlled by the government. And if you look at it, if you're being honest, just real, where do, where do we get our engineers for Google? Where do we get our engineers for Tesla? Where do we get our, what do we do? We ship them in from China, India, from <laughs> India, India, from my wife's from, from Indonesia. And she tells me about the academic, they have to take a grade level test at every grade to move to the next grade. They can't right. move. And now in 2015 in California, we got rid of the California high school exit exam, which was written up at about eighth grade level. But they, we said that high school students could not graduate unless they passed the California high school exit exam. But they got rid of that in 2015. Now there is no requirement. Standard. There is no accessibility. There is no accountability. We just graduate everybody. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's crazy, you know, like my cousin just uh, passed the uh, the exam in China and that's extremely hard. That's extremely hard. Like, you know, the kid from Monday to Friday, he got to get up at like five something in the morning and he's learning till uh, midnight. I know that's not healthy, but there is a something that you need to overcome then you can graduate. Many, especially if we're Asian, but we have other ethnicities that send their kids after school to more tutoring, to get more more tutoring in their math and their English, especially to Kumon. And they'll go in two or three, four hours and pay lots more money and the Indian people to get them to, why? Why? Our education system is failing. And as a high school teacher, like again, take my focus back to Franklin McKinley, I had to say, hey, what about what are they teaching our kids in sixth grade, seventh grade? Why aren't they teaching our kids how to read in third and fourth and fifth grade? We need to go and address the problems. We need to look at, we asked just a recent board meeting, one of the parents asked, where can we look at the percentage? How much percentage do you spend on academics? And how much do you spend on uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and social emotional learning and all the other things? And how much time do you spend in that? versus how much time do you spend in the academics? Uh, of course, the superintendent gave no answer to that. And as far as I know, there's no way that no plan for them to look at that and to differentiate. But that's exactly why I'm there on the school board and trying to get other people to come on board, say, hey, we need to have some accountability for our academics and for the 
things that parents want or don't want their schools to be their children to be exposed to, let them have their voice be heard and let there be transparency so that they know what's going on. Mm. Uh, right now, we've been on our show. We've been trying to push homeschool. I have two daughters. Uh, we don't want our daughters to uh, be in the public school because we just simply cannot trust public school system right now. And uh, our tax still go to public school, which I dislike a lot. What would you suggest parents to do right now if concerning parents who really care about education and the mental health of their children? Would you say a public school is a safe space? Oh, I, I, have, I have my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. Not Franklin McKinney School District, but, <laughs> I, but I, I have a wife, a young wife from Indonesia. And if we have a child, we've already discussed this as you've discussed this. Okay, My recommendation is first and foremost, for me, personal homeschool. That would be number one choice, homeschool. Second choice is a private Christian or charter school that you are more comfortable with this. I know in, especially in Silicon Valley in San Jose, many parents have worked two or three jobs. I, I Both parents have worked. So I got that. So homeschool may not be your, you might not, might not be able to fit that in. It might not work. So then charter school or a uh, uh, private Christian school, private school would be my second choice. Third choice would be public school. Okay, again, Public schools right now, the condition, that's why, again, I can't stress enough. That's why I ran because I've said enough, enough, enough. That's why Josh and Josue are, are running because they're saying enough, enough. We have to do something. So that would be my my recommendation right now. If your kids and I've spoken to many parents in Frank McKinley who have like, Josue, like Josh, who have pulled their kids out of Franklin McKinley School District. We have the the lowest uh, enrollment, student enrollment we've ever had. It's gone down consistently the last 10 years. Now we're at uh, 5,952 5, are in our regular public schools. 2,155 are in our charter schools, which are doing exceptionally well. But we're the lowest we've ever, we started out uh, 10 years ago, at almost 16,000 students. Now we're down to uh, about 10,000 students. So we've lost and rolled because, because a lot of parents are saying, enough, I'm taking my kids out. I'm taking them either to a different district or I'm going to homeschool or send them to private school. Now, of course, not all. We have probably 75 to 80% of the, of the parents, Christians or just more right people who have their kids in the public schools and there's really no choice. They really can't pull them out. They, they, that's where I have my student, my children. And I say, then speak up. Vote for these people like Josh. Vote for these people like Josue. Vote for people like me who are, who are trying to advocate for your rights to be heard. And as I've, I've right now, I've got, in fact, I've got two things on that I proposed sent to the superintendent and they're look they're sending the legal. One is on parental notification, current policy, which is 11 years old. I'm gonna say, anytime you talk to my child, my child about anything physical, maybe they're being bullied, maybe about their thing about gender, about identity, uh, they're maybe they're, they're thinking about depression, any physical, so uh, uh, emotional, uh, psychological, any issue at all, if you talk to my, uh, any staff member, administrator, teacher, anybody on campus speaks to my child or my child speaks to you about those things, you have three days, three days. Within three days, you have to notify the parent in writing and on phone that you're having this conversation with my child. We'll see how that goes. I don't expect it's going to pass because of the board members we have right now. But that's, you say, well, that should be a common sense thing. That should be a regular thing. That should be, we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. The other thing I have on is an update for the, the ceremonies and observances. In my public high school class, I'm the only classroom on campus that I do have my students and join me in giving the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of every school day. I'm going to do that again next year, too. And I'm going to, I made the, the, the 
amendment to our current policy that next year, starting next year, in all of our elementary school grade classes, they begin the, the school day like we did when we were kids with the Pledge of Allegiance in every school and in, in every classroom, led by a teacher, administrator, or a school employee. So it has to be led by somebody. We do that at our school board meeting, meetings. Every time we have a school board meeting, we always have somebody lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So why can't we do that in our schools? We should to teach patriotism. And then the other thing is that there will only be two flags, only be two flags that will be flown on school property, in classrooms and in front of the schools. There will be the American flag, the U.S. flag, and the California state flag. That's it. Nothing else. I've been in too many classrooms where I've seen LGTB, the rainbow flag flown instead of the American flag. I've seen BLM flags flown instead of the U.S. flag in public classrooms that our tax dollars are paying for. This should not happen. So I'm going to propose also that amendment to our current policy. We'll see how that one goes to it. Again, the way the school board members vote will show you exactly what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. This is not what the parents want. The parents want these parental rights and they want the teaching of patriotism in our classroom. If you know, I'm sure you're, I believe you're Chinese. The most patriotic people in our school district are the Vietnamese people. Very much so. The most patriotic people in our school district are the Vietnamese. Why can't that be for all of us to be teaching that and to be honoring our country? Many people come from other country, countries to join America, to be, to be American citizens. We don't see a, a, a rush of people leaving other countries to, to go to a communist uh, Vietnam or to a communist China or to a co communist Venezuela. We don't see that at all. But we see floods of people coming to be American and have the freedoms that we enjoy in our country. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think until we put Christ back in our school, all the parents should just homeschool with their kids. <laughs> I don't think even the Pledge of Allegiance is enough. I think we need to. <laughs> it's it's a battle, but you know, you've seen it one state. I can't remember one state. They said, we're, we're going to now put the, the Ten Commandments back in every classroom. Yeah, in Louisiana. And then we, yeah, then we see in another state where they're saying we're going to have Bibles in back in our classroom and we can have a uh, time for uh, silent prayer at the beginning of school. So it's coming back. And can mm -hmm. it happen in, in our school district? Yes. yes, yes, yes. And that's where I tell I tell everybody I speak to, the power is with the, pe the people. It's very, very important that you speak up. Power is in, in you speaking up. But... Sadly, the power for our schools and in the community, the, the most power is in the school board. You have to get the school boards. If you don't get the school boards, nothing's going to change. You can have thousands and thousands of parents show up and protest and, and have good, valid complaints, which we do have. But if the school board doesn't change, nothing changes. Okay, uh, we have one of a parents here, and he is actually running for school board. And uh, I think he has some experience that he wants to share with the parents and uh, see how dangerous our school district is in California. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience, Josue? Yeah, definitely. My name is Josue Gonzalez. I have two children in um, Franklin McKinley School District. Past uh, summer, before the school was let out, uh, we experienced a, a few things that were alarming to us in the sense of the whole pride movement coming into um, the picture. Um, they were pretty much trying to roll out the red carpet for um, a lot of the activities that we were seeing at the time, but we didn't believe that were actually going to happen in our schools. Um, we're talking about readings. We're talking about um, one of the things that, that really alarmed us, um, the libraries were de highly decorated with these books on gender for our kids to access easily. And um, they were showcasing all the, all the books, right? And on top of that, um, we had a superintendent invite for the whole district to come dressed as your shadow. And as a parent, I was wondering, well, what, is, what does this mean? And when you see the picture for the flyers, uh, it's a boy dressed in a tutu with a shadow um, that's pink. 
And it was based off of the book, My Shadow is Pink, which is a gender um, kind of story about a child who's trying to discover his gender. And he's uh, got a, a dad and his mom's not in the picture, right? And so he was inviting all the kids to come and dress as their shadow in, in this gender, yeah, just gender themed book. And so I was like, wait, um, uh, what if I don't want my child to participate? What if I don't want my child to, you know, take part in, in, in the Pride celebration? I mean, as a parent, I think I have a right. And what we were met with was from the principal was take them out of your, take them out of the school, basically, right? So I was, we were like, well, you're supposed to provide activities. You're supposed to be able to, you know, kind of the people who don't want to participate have something else to do. And at that point, we realized that the district was trying to push this. And so we gave push back. And thankfully, we got in contact with um, Mark when we sent a whole wide like um, school board messaging of like, hey, we have questions and we don't have any answers. Uh, we were told that they were going to be transparent. And at the end of the day, they just didn't send anything back, no replies to our questions as far as like, okay, what's happening this week or next week? To know whether or not I want to send my child to the school at that time, right? Um, because as a parent, I believe that I have the right to say, you will not participate, stay at home. Um, so then what happened was they actually stopped a lot of the activities because parents like me were pushing back on, on the movement, right? And it's still going on in the sense that they have a lot of things that we don't understand are happening. Things like um, psychological clinics coming into our schools making um, customers out of our children, um, things that we don't really advocate for in a sense of like, okay, our family values should be what's present, should be what's, you know, um, respected. And the way that the school board um, is run right now, is they do whatever they want without accountability. The only people that we have there is, is, is Mark that actually says, hey, you know what, parents do have rights. Um, parents should be respected, family values should be respected. And for that, he gets, you know, a lot of censuring and a lot of like, you know, hate um, from the school board and also teachers union because they're kind of in league with the um, um, district. And so it's, as a parent, I want to be able to represent parents and also kids. Um, I'm sure um, there are stories like Josh will say, right, um, where education and the level of education is just plummeting and um, that's something um, I'll leave him to uh, you know discuss but yeah so that that was my introduction to this whole uh, thing happening and and the reason why parents like us have to step up and we have to run because it is for our children and for the future of our education in our district uh, my name is Joshua Andrew Harrington and I'm a concerned parent basically you know I didn't really want to do this I'm an introvert person but Something has to be done, you know, for the kids, the sake of the kids, for my kid. I don't want other kids going through that, what my kid went into, you know, like having higher grades here in my district. And then because of that LGBT, we tried to move her to a different district, to the Evergreen District. Yeah, which is good. Uh, you know, it's good, but it's hard for now. We can see everything, the difference of how they teach there compared to our here, it's like night and day. Her le her level, oh, and, and doing math and writing, it's not on par on the grade four, and they have it on the evergreen side. Yeah, it's really bad. I feel sorry for my kid. Sometimes we have to be there for her. We're doing her whole, with her, her homework up to 11 o'clock at night, almost every day. Yes, because she doesn't know some of this stuff. And that is sad. That's why I want I want to run because I don't want other kids to have this same problem. How will they be prepared for the future? You can't just have feelings, you know, or you know, there's there. I don't want to say the bad word, but the agenda that they have, really. But they're teaching just you know all this sex stuff. Like they're kids. Let them be kids. I don't want that for my kids or other kids. You know, that's why I want transparency. So we know if we want to say, no, we don't want that agenda on our kids. Supposedly, schools will teach academics. That's how I grew up. Uh, you have your kids around, right? How, how does uh, your kids feel about it? Do, do they see a lot of like transition kids around? And then I'm open with that with my, especially my eldest daughter. 
You know, mm-hmm. she, she, I told her because we're Christians. I told her, you know, when she asked me, because they started first with in the library, mm-hmm. and they have a bunch of books like uh, this boys and girls translation. Then I told her, no, you're only a girl. God made you a girl. You cannot be a boy. They're really hammering on kids. And the library, you know, was like, okay, you know what? First, you know, I kind of like ignored it. Just because in the library only. And then after that, you start seeing in their homeworks and stuff. Like one of Josue, yeah. His husband. His husband. What is that? Not supposed to do that kind of stuff. Oh, that's disgusting. It is. It's very disgusting on what they're doing at schools now. Yeah, it's so we're... unfair for the kids to see that kind of stuff. Yeah, we're so glad that we see all these men stood up. All three yeah. of us. Like we, when we think about education system, a lot of time it's we we focus on a lot on the woman. You see, like school board is full of women, but this time, mm-hmm. all three men running for school board. We need strong men to save this country, to save the school, and to save our kids. Protecting family, it's a men's job, and it's a men's job to protect our education system, and it's a men's job to protect this nation. So, in order to ensure our future, we need strong men. Thank you, Joshua, and uh, t- two strong men coming up and save our kids and to stand up against the school board and the education system that's controlled by the government. I think that's a、uh, What we learned today, men's are standing up, and the government needs to watch out.、Uh, this is very inspiring, and then this is very important for all the parents to know. Your 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 kids is not safe in public school, and there are people, men, standing up to fix it. It is your right as parents to send these guys to go into your school board to fix your school board, to fix your school, to help your kids. There are righteous in California. There are righteous men in California who is doing the right thing. So、uh, thank you guys for coming.、Uh, we had a good time. And、uh, when is your election again? Election is coming up on、um, November, I believe November fourth. But that's it go- goes for the presidential election. So it will be. Unfortunately, I-, I-, I encourage people make sure you look for school board because school board will might be a little bit further down. You'll have the president. You'll have all the other elections、yeah. that have the senators. But you got to go further down to get the school boards. And so again, Josh,、uh, Josh Harrington, and Josue Gonzalez.、All、right. Thank you guys for coming. And then、uh, please share this video. Share to many parents as you can, and then we can change our education system. Thank you.